The privilege is mine to be here today. I'd like to thank the Lord for giving me the strength to speak to you today. I want to take the time to thank all those who made it possible for me to be here today. Pastor Robinson, the Board of Elders, but most of all, Owen Will but most of all, Elder Owen Williams for having such faith in me. Again, I say thank you, Grand Concourse. Thank you to my colleague and friend, Travelis, for your introduction. Let us pray. Dear kind and compassionate Father, as we are here today, we thank you for bringing us through the trials of the week. Let me be your clay and your mouthpiece that what I say may reflect your word and what you want me to say, Lord. Thank you in your name, amen. amen. The theme this month is me, my God, my family. From that, I have decided to entitle my little sermon, Who Do You Consider Family? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, are you my family? I want you to turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, are you my family? The concept of family is extremely important in the Bible. The creation of family was introduced in the very beginning, as we see in Genesis 1, verse 28. If you wouldn't mind, could you please turn your Bibles there? Genesis 1, verse 28. And it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. God's plan for creation was for men and women to marry and have children. And men and women would form a one flesh union through marriage. In Genesis 2 verse 24. And they with their children became a family the essential building blocks for a human society. And you can trust that a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, an uncle, an aunt, even a friend, loved one, and especially church family will be there for you. I'm sure we all agree that family is a sacred and important thing from siblings to grandparents. You can describe a family member as a person who has your best interests in mind at all times. But I want to ask you, who do you consider a family? A person who you support and supports you. That's what family is, right? Family may one, sometimes feel one-sided, and Jesus is a prime example of this. Jesus thought as the, of the Pharisees, people who did nothing but bad to him as close family, so much so that he was willing to die for them. The Pharisees believed Jesus to be a blasphemer, a liar, a breaker of tradition, to the point where they would have him killed, but not due to an undying faith in their religion, no. If they had that, accepting Jesus would be too easy. But maintaining the power that they have held for so long was their only concern. Think about it. God gave Israel a kind, calm savior in Jesus Christ. But they said they wanted a warrior to fight and free them. My brothers and sisters, a familial bond cannot be formed by a militant power. If we were to fight for peace, we would always have an enemy. An enemy that would be submissive, yes, to follow God, but only through fear. God wants us not to follow him in fear, as Psalms 110, 103 verse 13 says. We need to put away our weapons, the malice in our hearts, the hate in our eyes, the hostility we feel against others. These are weapons that put cracks in our faith, our armor, allowing Satan to creep into our lives, corrupting and breaking us. breaking us away from the family. But God, who is always prepared, has put in a, an automatic function that helps stop this. 
The family system is an automatic system that cannot be stopped, a system that kicks in whenever emotional and spiritual support is needed. The songwriter writes, you will notice we say brother and sister down here. It's because we are a family and the folks are so dear. When one has a problem, we all share the pain and rejoice in the family, the family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I have been washed in the fountain and cleansed by his blood. Brothers and sisters, do we truly mean it when we sing this song? Are we truly a family? To some of us, a family is people who live in our house and extended to it is our grandparents, uncles, aunts, and some of our cousins. But I don't believe this happens here at Grand Concourse. All of us know that we are one big family. And if you don't remember, I've come by to remind you that we all are one big family that go together. There's a saying that goes, the family that prays together stays together. You as a church, you pray together. So I hope that you are one big family. We all know the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, verse 25 to 37. This man, who I will give the name of my friend, Brother Nigel Smith. Now, thieves, who knows? Othniel, Travis, Chloe, beat him up and stole everything. They put him t on the brink of death. He was helpless and could not do anything. But now a priest, Pastor Robinson, was passing that same way when he saw him. He was so beat up, he said, no, sir, that's not my member, and walked on the other side. And a Levite, Elder Barney, Elder Mitchell, Elder Madre, when he came to this place and saw him, he went the other way because, again, he looked like no one they knew. But a Samaritan, I say, but a Samaritan, Mr. Stevens or Mr. Williams was traveling and they came that way when they saw him, took pity of him, took care of him, and took him to an inn. Brothers and sisters, we all know this story very well. This Samaritan knew nothing of this man, but he felt compelled to take care of him, like a family member should. He felt compelled to open his arms and allow him to walk into his life. He took it upon his shoulders to do something about it, like family members should. My question is, would you take it upon your shoulders to do that? How many of us act, would have acted like the priests the Lev and the Levite? We've watched or seen others hurt, and we aren't bothered. I want to let you know, if you are like the Good Samaritan, everyone you come in contact with is your family. Everyone you meet is your family. It doesn't matter if they stand at the pinnacle of, social, of the social standing or if they're at the bottom. It doesn't matter if they have the best job or if they're living on the sidewalk. Everyone is your family and you should consider everyone family. Everyone who takes a breath is your family. Everyone that, is from the des that has descended from Noah to now is your family. I want to let you know, if you are like the Good Samaritan, everyone you come in contact with is your family. The people at your job, at your school, at your church, and wherever you are, we are all God's children and so we are family. We are all the people of God. We all consider ourselves the people of God, so we are family. I pray that God will allow all of us to consider everyone as a family member. Amen. Family is not just a finite thing. Family extends far further than just the people that you surround yourself in. Like Jesus, family, Jesus thought of family as everyone that took, that drew breath on his earth. Family, we should be 
open to stretching our hands out to others no matter what we they're going through. I'd like to ask all of you, if you are a person who considers your family, I want you to raise your hand. If you consider everyone here, I want you to raise your hand here. Amen. If you are a family, you need to not only think of what of the people you are with as family, but you need to think of them as a person that you can go to. God gives us family not so that not only to take care of us, so that when so that if we have any problems, we can go to them and seek refuge. I want to tell you today that if you are a fam that whoever is your family is everyone that surrounds you. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor? neighbor. No, no, not neighbor. I want you to turn to your family and say, family. Family, family oh family. family. You are my family. If we are in God together, you are my family. Amen, church.